Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a more in-depth look of the thermite that I made in the previous video, the castable calcium sulfate thermite. In my previous video, I demonstrated how to make the castable thermite and what it is, but not some of the applications that it can be used in. Nor did I demonstrate the power of it, I just made a punk of it and lit it on fire. This was pointed out to me by a commenter recommending I could cast a lock into it and see the destructive power of it. So I went ahead and took a small brass lock and cast some of the calcium sulfate, sulfate thermite into it and made it into a nice brick. So once again we have one of these small locks in there and we can light it to see how powerful it is. Now my prediction is it's not that powerful, it's more bright than anything. But let's light it and see how it goes. And it looks like the lock's right there, and it's slightly glowing, so let's have it cool off for a bit, and we'll come back and check up on it. But I was pleasantly surprised by how much damage was done. And we are back. Some time has passed, so let's see if the lock has survived or if it has died. a lot of slag on the lock. It's relatively survived, not very well. You can see the spring has become exposed down there and has melted a section of the lock on the bottom primarily, but that's about it. Let's take it inside and see if we can get it open. So let's take a closer examination of our lock. We still have some slag left over on it, and it kind of smells like a hard-boiled egg that's been left in a bag for a bit too long. It has that nice sulfurly compounds, which give it the nice egg smell. Now you see a point where it melted out here, where you can see the spring, and there's a lot of deformation within the body itself, but there's no deformation on the shackle, it's just been oxidized. Here's where a lot of material has melted away. And you can see that the lock is very misshapen in points due to it melting. Surprisingly, the keyway is pretty still open. So let's see if we can get a key in there. And we can, and as expected, it doesn't want to turn. Now, the calcium thermite is cool and all, but it doesn't really have the destruction ability that I want. It burns bright, and it's interesting that you're able to cast it into a brick or any shape that you want. So, a new material was needed to be made, a new mixture that has a higher destructive capability. And for that mixture, we mix the old and the new. The traditional thermite of iron oxide and aluminum, and the new castable thermite. So with this, it's two parts aluminum, two parts of the calcium sulfate hemihydrate, the plaster of Paris or gypsum, and then three parts traditional iron red oxide. Now all the steps for producing this and casting it is gonna be the same as it, the previous, so I recommend going and watching the previous video if you wanna get all that details. 
So let's jump to when I have this all cast up into another form and we'll throw a lock into it and compare the destruction ability of this one and the previous one. Here we are with our lock in our new thermite mix. You see it takes on this nice reddish hue due to the iron oxide in it. And it's no longer that nice gray color, which was because of the aluminum mixing with the white. Okay, let's light it and then take a look at the lock afterwards. It's safe to say that that one was much better than the previous mix. The lock is pretty welded in there, so let's give it some time to cool down and we'll take a look at it. Nice glowing slag around it. Putting off some good heat. And those splatters that you saw coming off of it was probably because there was some water left over in the cap which was boiling instantly as the 4,000 degree material was interacting with it. Here's the lock that we melted into the pipe cap after it's cooled down for a bit. And it doesn't look like it's done more damage, but it has in fact, because right around here where the lock was resting on it, it's completely melted into it, forming one giant piece of lock. Now, if the material was held around it a bit more and didn't just have time to burn off and flake off, I definitely think the block would have melted. Or if I took a pair of pliers and pulled it apart, this would have definitely came across out of the socket that it needs to be in. Now, one application I thought about using this castable thermite is in this. Now, you see our thermite makes up the main body of it, and then we have bits of sparkler embedded in the thermite. On the inside, we have copper wire and a grayish wire which is lead that has a rosin core inside of it which is a flex material. Now you take your wires and you put it on the inside of here and with that you can light this and then it should self solder your two wires together. Now you could use this for some thick wires I just used made a thin wire model. Now let's light it and see how well this works. Another idea of use is for sweating pipes. So here I have a copper elbow and a regular piece of copper. This slides in how it normally would, but what's different is I have the thermite here and then a piece of lead here which has a flux core. So when this slides in here, it fits in nice and snug. The thermite will be lit. This will hopefully melt and the flux will melt, sweating the pipe together. Which is the same concept that this one uses. So let's head outside and light both of them off. Here we are at the test site and we have our thermite all set up and our copper wire. We'll be doing this one first. And we have the torch all ready to go. Let's light it and see how well it works. Now I don't have high hopes for this one, so anything that does happen is a well-expected surprise.
Now the wire has melted off as expected. Probably should have removed that. But let's give it some time to cool and we'll come back to it. And now we have our pipe all set up. Let's light the sparkler and see what happens. And here we are. Let's give it some time to cool and we'll check it out. Now we're back inside with our cooled wire and it is in fact attached and it's not coming out. The wire insulation did melt off but I should have expected that because it's plastic and this is thermite and it kind of gets a little hot when it reacts. Now the important thing when it comes to wire is for it to conduct electricity. So I have a multimeter set up on to testing whether there's connectivity. So when they tap together, there's that beeping noise. So let's see if we can get a reading. And we in fact can, so the wires are electrically connected. Now let's take a look at the pipe. And you see it did weld in a couple of places. Here is the main one where it actually sweat into the pipe and this is where it welded onto the pipe. There's really no welds anywhere else along it. It is attached, but I doubt this will hold water. As soon as water tries to go through here, it'll leak right out. Some improvements that I feel that could be made with this is by adding a piece of copper around here so it holds the solder in more because I found a lot of hunks of solder that just flaked off instead of actually melting. They just fell off once the top band was melted and flaked off. You see it was resting like this so where it did solder was where it was sitting on it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, post those in the comment section below. If you want to check out my social medias, the links are always in the description. I read all the comments so if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. And if you want to support the channel, check out my eBay store where I have different scientific stuff for supply. And every dollar that's spent there goes directly back to the channel for more exciting experience. And as always, thank you for watching and your support. Well, I don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. I sold my cad, I bought me a Jeep, I got that bug and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all.